Will your job soon be replaced by software? From the outside, that seems to be exactly what Elon Musk is doing at Twitter. Now in the first weeks of Elon's leadership, Twitter lost about 3,700 employees. Now his plan to fill this void seems to be doubling down on the engineering talent that still remains in an attempt to build software that can replace those needs. And a lot of those jobs don't seem like the kind of job software could replace, and that's why this should be a wake up call for all of us. Look, Elon Musk is well aware of the breakthroughs in artificial intelligence, and he also has a long history of turning technologies into practical applications. Now, if AI is already about to take over driving for humans at Tesla, having it take over some of the human jobs at Twitter might very well be a possibility. So when I see him asking for bullet point summaries of his engineer's code for the past six months, along with asking for things like up to 10 screenshots of the most salient lines of code that they've written, I just get the sense that deep inside of him, he has an intuition and understanding of how code can scale and it's starting to solve a lot of people problems. Problems, and that he's going all in on rebuilding Twitter around that principle. Now I definitely know there's plenty of people you can point to that are on Twitter venting their anger, a lot of them who left their jobs, a lot of them that say it's falling apart, but look at this. Some of those remaining engineers look pretty happy right now. Like check out this photo that he posted from one in the morning last night. I mean, if you are one of the remaining engineers at Twitter, you, I think you've been elevated to a pretty top spot in the company. You know, the king came in, shook things up, and he picked up the people that he likes, put them in the new power position. Those are the engineers. And if his engineers really do come up with innovative software that solves people problems, Twitter will be both a public example of how technology can eat up new jobs and a public nudge for other CEOs to start downsizing their people needs and replacing them with artificial intelligence. Is Elon Musk more of a CEO or more of a CTO? Now, Elon Musk might be the new CEO of Twitter on paper, but his actions so far tell a different story. They have been less like a chief executive officer and more like a chief technical officer. And I say this because a CTO, a chief technical officer, it's their job to focus the engineers, to think about a long-term technical strategy and organize the work. Because to walk in there and say the first things that I wanna prioritize are learning about the Twitter technology stack, interviewing the engineers, to me that seems like somebody who's not gonna have a CEO in the company at all. This is a company that's technology driven with a CTO on top and the engineers right below him reporting to him. It's a technology mindset all the way down. Now, one of Elon's first orders of business was to tell employees that he would be holding short technical interviews with all the remaining Twitter engineers in order to better understand the technology, as well as a request for the remote working software engineers to fly into San Francisco to meet with everyone else. So now let's talk a little bit more about this 1 a.m. photo that's fascinating me right now. I love just like gr the grind, right? Like this, the software, the Silicon Valley grind, the sleeping under the desk, like we're gonna build it, we're gonna change the world. I like that feeling so much. That's been at the heart of so many great Silicon Valley companies. I remember going through it in my early days, not that we became a big company, but I do remember building a software company with that mentality. And it got us far, far enough that we, you know, got invested in and, and ran out of runway. And, and it's a story for another day, but I like this 1 a.m. vibe. It's just my thing. So I could like actually imagine it being really fun. Like if I was an engineer at Twitter and Elon was like, hey man, those are great screenshots and those are very salient lines of code or whatever. Meet me, you know, at, at midnight or whatever on level 12 and like I've got the entire team together and we're gonna rethink the organization. Like I would be energized and I would be motivated, just to be honest. Now I'm not necessarily speaking for all those people, but look at this photograph. Like to me, that's him showing that he's interested in making the engineers' voices heard. I mean, they must feel like they've been elevated. The leadership of the company understands their value. Are they already pampered? Maybe. Maybe they don't need any more of that. Code, when it's written correctly, it just, it can do so much in value that like they get pampered and they get celebrated just for doing little things because a few lines of code just, it just makes more of a difference than it should in some cases. And look, deep down, we're humans, we really want attention. I can't imagine them being much more excited than to go home to their you know, loved ones and spouses and be like, hey, pull up Twitter, go to Elon Musk's Twitter account, check me out, I'm doing a selfie with him, you know? That's gotta be just 
making them feel like, look, I'm connected to the world's richest person. He's listening to me. He's in the room with me. Like he's making decisions alongside me. Like to me, that's, that's just inspiring good leadership, but it's leadership for a select few, possibly a very dangerous level of dehumanization for all of the other people that made a lot of the softer decisions at Twitter and did contribute in their own way. Just plain devil's advocate, there is absolutely people who should not be up at 1 a.m. They have other things to do and it isn't a balanced life. Uh, I'll let this uh, tweet speak for itself. So if you don't want to basically live at work and possibly get four hours of sleep at the same time and meet Musk's slave schedule, then you don't want to work, unquote. You're promoting an environment that is toxic to people's lives and their well-being. That might be true. I mean, he's asking a lot of these people, I think there's some level of like dedicating yourself to work that's great, but hey man, like as I get older, I know you need to eat well, I know you need to sleep, I know that there are things that are more important than making money and just doing the grind and it's not a great life when you just do that all the time. But sometimes it does give you purpose too. So it's just, it depends on the person, depends on the phase of life they're in. And if Elon wants to build his company around those people, they do provide probably the most value per dollar when it comes to something like a software company like this. I'm gonna assume he took this photo after sitting there with the engineers and being like, explain it to me. I'm the new boss, like what am I dealing with here? And they said, all right, like here's the flow chart. I'm starting, you know, from the user point of view, the web, Android, iPhone, the timeline mixer, I'm guessing this is something along the lines of each of these bullets are kind of their own algorithm or probably each one of these would be a different system it would query. And which ad should I inject based on the content of the page? Con conversation module might be a language thing, like maybe depending on what IP you're from, show it to them in this format. Cursing and plagiarism would be like a quick content match ID check or looking for not keywords, but some kind of neural net that knows what bad language is in terms of sentences and phrases. Just straight tweet duplication, like is this guy just ripping other people off? Logging the data that's served so that in the future, the system has left a record. I'm a guy with no inside information. I'm just looking at this photo, trying to just kind of wrap my head around what Elon might have learned. So obviously take it all with like a huge grain of salt. I, I don't know. Elon Musk the king, look at that. Boom, 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 boom. Bullseyes everywhere. So accurate. Oh dang, let's see how that goes. Reinstate former President Trump. 134 million people have seen this poll. I mean, he'd probably make money on it, but I'm not gonna weigh into that one. It is so fascinating the way he's running this. And look, I, I honestly don't think I'm saying anything that crazier. I think Elon would admit that he he's just a technology guy and that just gets you really far in today's world. I mean, look at this quote. I frankly don't want to be the CEO of any company. What does he want to do? He wants to kind of play around with the technology. He kind of wants to push the future into the present. At SpaceX, it's really that I'm responsible for the engineering of the rockets and Tesla for the technology in the car that makes it successful. Sounds like a CTO to me. So CEO is often viewed as somewhat of a business focused role, but in reality, my role is much more of an engineer developing technology and making sure that we develop breakthrough technologies and that we have a team of incredible engineers who can achieve those goals. I mean, that's what's cool about Tesla is it just shook up the car industry because it did things smarter. It treated the car like hardware and then put software on it like a cell phone, change the business model, use some of the things that were already working in Silicon Valley and yeah, just disrupted the whole industry. You know, and once this technology bedrock is reestablished at Twitter, it says that right here that he might be looking to leave and put a new CEO in charge, somebody who can do that kind of business stuff. Because he also reiterated that he does not intend on staying the CEO of Twitter forever. I expect to reduce my time at Twitter and find somebody else to run Twitter over time, he said. And as much as he loves the engineers and he sees the future in the same way Steve Jobs did, I, I think he's a little bit more of a Steve Jobs than he is a Steve Wozniak, if you know what I mean. So as I was trying to kind of put this narrative in my head together about how he's like building up all the engineers, I had to address some of the facts, which is that he's publicly fought with engineers multiple times. Now I know a lot of people don't wanna hear that because he plays up the technical aspect so much, but that's part of the mystique that I think that he actually kind of needs to keep. I think he is smart, I think he is technical, but there's just, only so much of getting into the weeds that you can do with the amount of time we have on earth. And the reason I say that is look at this quote. He got into kind of a, kind of an online Twitter beef with one of the engineers, this guy, Eric Fronheifer. 
So Elon tweets out this like apology, but it's really just kind of like blaming other people for bad code, where he says, I'd like to apologize for Twitter being super slow in many countries. The app is doing greater than a thousand poorly batched RPCs just to render a home timeline. Okay, it sounds like somebody hadn't really thought through the whole engineering challenge, if that's the case, but I don't think it is that way because this engineer that spent approximately six years working on Twitter and put his public reputation out there disputed it, right? I won't go into all the details, like you'd read them here, but he says that that's just not how it works. He's basically just saying like, Elon, you got the technicals wrong. Um, then Elon's like, why didn't you send this to me privately? And he's like, why didn't you ask me privately before making this statement? And then he gets fired. So I got this sense that Elon's also kind of like, ah, don't don't like mess up my image. You know what I mean? I, I'm supposed to be the guy that when I say these technical things, people believe them. So another thing I wanted to point to was this engineer that was recently let go who specialized in GraphQL. Now this woman, Sasha Solomon, really knows her stuff. Scala, like they use Scala and kind of like hearing about that. And I ended up talking to Twitter people and I was like, this place looks awesome also. Um, so yeah, so talking to people and uh, ended up working here. So if you just look at this long history of presentation she's been giving over the last, whatever, six or seven years on GraphQL, you can clearly tell that this is like what she specializes in. So look at this. She currently serves on the GraphQL governing board as a representative of Twitter, as well as on the technical steering of the committee for GraphQL. So clearly this is a person who knows how to talk to APIs, knows how to understand packaging data and communication on the web. So I would trust her when she says that Elon Musk just doesn't understand what GraphQL is. I mean, I'm not saying she needs to be that punchy about it, but it does seem like she might have some technical expertise that he would be interested in. And I'm not even saying he's being super nefarious about it. I'm just saying that complex things in our heads need to be kind of boiled down to people. Like everything's like the Biden administration or the Trump administration when they're so disconnected from 99.9% .9 of all the decisions that the government makes, it makes no sense to do that, but we do it anyways. And in the same way, you can't really get your head around how many people it really takes to run like a rocket company and a tunnel company and a, you know, electric car company and now a huge social media network. We just bloop, lump those things together. Elon Musk is basically a metaphor, like a metaphor for leadership. It's not a person doing one thing. So at the end of the day, I think that he is going to have some success with replacing people with automation. When those people are gone and there's a void and it's clear, you know, computer scientists sit down and tackle that problem. They often have surprising levels of success. And that means that a lot of people out there just won't have jobs in the future, just to be frank. And it's unfair, but when those people get replaced, that money will still flow into whatever system they were replaced from, and the people on top of that system are going to get that value. They are going to become even more rich and even have more resources to replace more people, and a cycle will happen. And there will be a lot of people without jobs and a lot of software running what used to be human jobs very soon. And as a person with a net worth of $200 billion, this might as well just be the media arm of his, you know, personal opinion, and he'll be fine. Like, I don't think it's going anywhere. I don't think Twitter is in any danger of falling apart. I think it's brighter than ever if you want to look at, like, sheer dollar amounts and potentially health of the company. And that's not the only thing we should consider, but as a society, it's not Elon's job to run a company that takes care of all those people, but they do need to be taken care of. But that's a bigger question. That should be something with the government and the citizens coming together. His company should be an equal part in it with all the other big companies that are replacing people with software but I don't know how to tackle that yet. I'm going to keep thinking about it and we should have a conversation about that, me and you. But there's a lot of people like 50, 60, 70, maybe even 80%, depending on how far out I project that eventually I can see neural networks sitting in clouds being trained on some kind of a data set where they can replace the people that are doing those jobs right now. So as a CTO, what's important to him is that the technology works and that it scales. And look, if I'm just being real, right now the only thing that probably matters to Elon Musk is the machines that will run that company in the future and the people who will work like machines right now to build those machines. 
All right, and as promised, here's an image of a polar bear dancing with a bumblebee as requested by the user, which is actually from our other YouTube channel, Be Curious Podcast. I had to do something because we only have 623 subscribers and nobody actually made a request on the last video. I had to make one. So that's why you got the polar bear dancing with the bee. I hope you enjoy. See you guys in the next video.